G'day, it's Fugitive Australian Journalist Shane Dowling from the website Kangaroo Court of Australia. Now this video is absolute dynamite. It takes you to the heart of corruption of the New South Wales government and it relates to Amy Brown giving evidence yesterday, uh, the 3rd of August 2022 at the New South Wales Parliament inquiry into John Barillaro. Now this specific uh, video relates to uh, Amy Brown discussing Stephen Cartwright being appointed to the Agent General position in the UK, which is the same position as uh, John Barillaro was going to be appointed in the US, except they give it a different name in the UK. They call it Agent General, but it's really a Trade Commissioner role, same as John Barillaro. Now, what happened yesterday was absolutely mind-blowing. Amy Brown admitted that Stephen Cartwright threatened her during negotiations for his salary package and threatened to go over her head and go to uh, the Premier or the Deputy Premier if he didn't get what he wanted. This was during negotiating his salary, uh, his living away from home allowance, uh, cost of living, and I think superannuation as well. Now, you need to understand that the inquiry was all about how John Barillaro was a political appointment. He'd been stitched up uh, by the Premier and, or Deputy Premier. Uh, jobs for the boy scenario. Well, it turns out the UK job was exactly the same almost, uh, probably even worse. And just to give you a bit of background before we listen to what uh, Amy Brown said in Parliament yesterday, what happened was that uh, these positions were originally being uh, interviewed and uh, overseen by, I think it was Treasury, the Department of Treasury in the New South Wales government. But then they uh, last year, I think it was March last year, they 2021, they set up an investment in New South Wales. So the roles, uh, oversight of the roles and some of the staff were transferred into investment in New South Wales. And then it reported to uh, Amy Brown. Now this uh, Stephen Cartwright, he wasn't on the original uh, interview list. He wasn't interviewed. Uh, they interviewed all the potential candidates. And Stephen Cartwright's come over the top late in the game, somehow. Uh, being interviewed, got the job. And at that stage, oversight of the roles were transferred into Investment New South Wales, which was Amy Brown's department and still is. Now, so the final negotiations before he started on the salary package was done with Amy Brown, or she had oversight of it. And Stephen Cartwright, um, for some reason, wasn't happy with the salary package. Obviously, he wasn't get, getting as much as he wanted in the negotiations. He hadn't started yet. So he's not even an employee yet. And he threatened Amy Brown. He said, look, if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to the Deputy Premier or the Premier. Now that's almost blackmail. It's probably not quite blackmail, but very, very close, right on the border. Certainly a threat. Certainly someone abusing his position. Well, he didn't even have a position. Um, and for him to have the guts to do that says there's something badly, badly wrong. Now, based on the evidence that was... Uh, by Amy Brown yesterday, she said there was witnesses to him threatening her because it was done on a Zoom or a meeting. So there were other people listening to that and heard it. So it's not like he can deny it now. There's going to be multiple witnesses. And the thing is, why has that not been referred to the New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption? Because of Stephen Cartwright did it threaten a CEO of a government department for better pay conditions, otherwise going to the Premier or the Deputy Premier, says he's in tight with the Premier and the Deputy Premier, obviously. And Amy Brown had an obligation to refer that to ICAC. She's got legal obligations as a head of a department. And now that's been made public, the Premier, Dominic Perrottet, and the Deputy Premier, well, the Deputy Premier, uh, Stuart Ayres, resigned yesterday. So we don't know who the new Deputy Premier is at the moment. But they've all got an obligation to refer this in the New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption, have it fully investigated. Now let's have a listen to Amy Brown in uh, New South Wales Parliament inquiry yesterday. Therefore you then took responsibility for the selection process of the Agent General at that point in time? Yes. And you, it was your job to finish off the negotiations? Yes, Miss West had carriage of negotiations, um, but I was an escalation point, so to speak. You end up being the employer like you were for the other positions? That's right. And so, at this point, 
Mr Cartwright had already been identified as the preferred candidate. Yes. But he didn't go through the application process or, or at least at the same time as others did? Um, I just, there was just some, um, he was considered, he applied, he was a successful candidate. There was just a Sorry, he was considered by whom well, and when? By the, by the panel, by the hiring panel. Um, I just know that there was, they conducted a round of interviews. Um, someone was first ranked candidate and then Mr Cartwright got considered and later. Then you have to commence or complete contract negotiations, correct? That's right. And then sometime in that process, you leached the conclusion that Mr Cartwright felt he had an elevated status, did you say? Yeah. Okay, so what do you mean by elevated status? Um, where, the, and NGS Global was still involved at this point. The contract negotiations with him as to his um, base salary package and cost of living allowance and so on, it was quite difficult. That's why it kept being escalated to me um, as CEO at that time. Um, We've established that Mr Cartwright got a cost of living allowance to the tune of about 112 and in fact we had quite a lot of discussions because mm. it, we thought that the New York position may have been on a similar one and you clarified that last time. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So they were the two issues that were in dis that were the difficult contract issues to be resolved, were they? Um, Predominantly, yes. The, the what's the base salary and what's the cost of living? And sorry, I interrupted you. Super you... arrangements as well. Yeah, it's, it's there's a lot of. Comp I mean, trying to do any international contract negotiations are difficult because everybody has different tax rules, super, and so on. This one just seemed particularly heightened and protracted. Okay, so heightened, protracted, and in part because perhaps Mr. Well, certainly you had the view as his counterparty that Mr. Cartwright had a sense of elevated status. Yeah. I did rudely interrupt you when you were explaining what else gave you the impression Not of elevated time. status. Um, I, I, he, he would, if, if things were getting too difficult, he seemed to be, um, find it um, a bit of a go-to statement to say that he would go to the Deputy Premier or the Premier. Sorry? When negotiations got particularly difficult, he said, well, I'll just escalate this to the Deputy Premier or the Premier. So he pulled rank on you, or he tried to, is what you're he describing. He didn't succeed. Terry Brown. <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> but hang on, let me just, sorry. He, well, um, he told you, what did he tell you, email you, or he told you that if things get too difficult, I'm going to go see the Deputy Premier or the Premier? One of the reasons I'm forthcoming is he said it on a Teams call with multiple people, so you could probably ask some of my colleagues and get the same answer, yes. Oh, who was on the call? <laughs> um, my general counsel is the only person I can confirm was on the call. That's Mr Carr? Or was it Mr Carr at, the, at Investment New Zealand at this point in time? Yes, whenever that, yes, because like I said, they were protracted. Okay. Discussions. So, and, but there are other people who you do not recall who were on that call? Yes, um, you could test with Miss Bell, but I can't confirm. But. Is it possible perhaps you might be able to make inquiries now as to who was on that call? And then on balance, if you don't mind taking it on notice? Certainly. So, in the course of these protracted negotiations, and when you say protracted, what do you mean by protracted? Um, well, I, whenever we felt we had the contract settled, there would be um, more disputes raised as to whether or not the package was sufficient. Okay, and when you said that, you said that he, I'm going to use the verb threatened. Is that an unreasonable verb to use? Sorry, I, I... Or suggested or said? Probably, let's said. say said. Let's say said. He said that he'd go to the Deputy Premier or the Premier. Which Premier are you referring to? Sorry. Uh, the current Premier or the former Premier? I, I'll take it on notice in terms of the when that comment was made on a Teams call so that I can just confirm when it was said. Because... Um, it's been a long journey oh, it and <laughs> it actually straddles between um, prior to 5th of October 2021 and after 5th of October 2021. So, sorry, when was the point where the, the agent general 
well, no, actually, to be fair, when was the point the candidate Cartwright uh, told you? When was his team's call? Do you have a call? Um, she just said she was going to clarify. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, sorry, I didn't hear that, Secretary yeah. Brown. Um, it, yeah. But when you say protracted, how many, how many, over how many months was this negotiation with the Agent General candidate taking place? Um, I believe the contract negotiations took many months. It was a bit confusing because he started in the role um, on Monday 26th of July. He was announced on the 1st of October and he did, and then he went offshore sometime after that. So I believe the um, some of the contention was around what entitlements he was um, entitled to while he was still living here in Australia and which parts of his package that relate to his overseas status are payable or not payable, depending on where he's living. Okay, and it took many months to resolve this to a, a, a position that was at least satisfactory to him? Yes. Was the final position satisfactory to you? Yes. Was it your preferred position? Um, That's not a pretty fair question, is it? Well, no, it's in contrary. I think we have an aligned understanding. Okay. But at some point in that protracted conversations or negotiations, he says to you that I'll take it to the Deputy Premier or the Premier, worst that effect? Yes. Okay. And uh, how did you respond? Um, I think I said good luck, but it's not going <laughs> to change my mind. Okay. Did he ever escalate it to the Premier or the Deputy Premier? Not that I know of. Okay. But did you infer from that that the, it was, there was a possibility that he had already had conversations with the Deputy Premier or the Premier? Uh, possibility, but I can't conclude. Or did you have to alter your behaviour in any way, shape or form to account for that possibility? No. Okay. So do you think it was, was it a display of ego or on behalf of the Agent General candidate? Or was it, you know, something which was highly unusual that in a job interview, well, let me put this has any of the other candidates for stick positions in any negotiations ever said to you that they, in the matter of a dispute, that they would seek the intervention of the Deputy Premier or the Premier? Absolutely not. So the only time this has happened in respect to any of the six successful stick candidates was in respect to Mr Cartwright, is that fair? He's the only person who said worse that effect. In my experience. Now, Stephen Cartwright ended up negotiating $112,000 for cost of living allowance for the UK. But what John Barillaro was going to get before he uh, resigned from the position, before he even started, was only uh, 18000 So what's the difference there? Uh, 94000 might as well round it up to $100,000. $100,000 difference. So John Cartwright threatening Amy Brown to go to the Premier or the Deputy Premier if he didn't get what he wanted. He ended up walking away with an extra $94,000. Now, that's got to be investigated because if it's not investigated, he's leveraged off the Premier, his relationship with the Premier and the Deputy Premier to get an extra $94,000. They've aided, in effect, aided and abetted him of fraudulently obtaining a lot of money. Now, which Premier it was and which Deputy Premier is unknown. Amy Brown said the negotiations uh, went on for a few months and over that period last year, the Premier at the time, Gladys Berejiklian, re resigned on the 3rd of October 2021 and uh, John Barillaro resigned on the 5th of October 2021. So whether it was them or the new uh, Premier and Deputy Premier, Dominic Perrottet and Stuart Ayres, is unknown. She, uh, Amy Brown said she couldn't remember the exact time frame of when he made that threat, Stuart uh, Cartwright, uh, Stephen Cartwright, I mean. So, that is red hot. The other media haven't reported on it. I noticed that Sydney Morning Herald did do a little bit of a report on it uh, yesterday, but that story uh, went off the front page of their website very quickly. And I can't find any other articles by anyone else. And that's probably the, one of the reddest and hottest uh, pieces of information to come out of yesterday's uh, hearing, because it shows how corrupt the New South Wales government is. The fact that uh, one of their own inside boys, they've appointed to a role over the top of everyone else for the UK job, felt he's uh, got enough uh, power that he can threaten a CEO of a government department. Um, 
I think Amy Brown used the term that he felt, she felt that uh, Stephen Carr would have an elevated sense of worth that he could uh, threaten her like that. Now she said she did nothing, she laughed it off, rah, 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 but that's not good enough. She's got an obligation to send that off to New South Wales Independent Commission Against Corruption for them to investigate. Um, other than that, uh, I also published a video late last night and I discussed the other issues that came out of yesterday's hearing, which is worth uh, watching that video. You'll be able to see that on my YouTube channel. And in case you didn't know, I set up a John Barillaro corruption page on my website, Kangaroo Court of Australia. So visit that. It's got all the articles I've written about him over the last sort of 12, 18 months and also videos I've done on him uh, in relation to his corruption. And uh, I've also updated the Kangaroo Court of Australia t-shirt uh, shop. Um, and so it's looking a bit better at the moment. So I've only been going up and, uh, up and running for a week, so uh, it's looking improved. So make sure you visit that and have a, another look. And uh, please share this video on, on Twitter, Facebook, etc. Other than that, uh, thank you for your time and have a good day.